Okay, next up we have Raphael Herzog, who will be speaking about Kali Linux and their experience in, uh, in tracking the testing distribution. Uh, welcome. Thank you. So, hello everybody. It's time for the introduction. As I said before, I'm going to present Kali Linux today to you. So, we'll cover first part about the, well, what it is because many of you probably don't know about it. And then uh, what we use, and, how and the choice we made to set up our infrastructure. And, well, the workflow we use to do our packaging work. The tools we have set up for quality assurance. And the last part will be more dedicated to the problems we have, because we have chosen to be based on Debian testing. So we have issues and some workarounds and also some wishes of, for, of improvements that we would like to see on the Debian side. So Kali Linux is a Debian derivative that has been created in 2013. Uh, it's focused on penetration testing and contains lots of security tools, forensic tools. So it's used by Security Express doing audits, uh, by uh, script kiddies also, but uh, that's <laughs> another problem. It's really the successor of Backtrack. Many of you know about Backtrack, but really uh, uh, it's the same people doing both. You know, Backtrack was uh, the first try. It was some th so somewhat hackish, not really made cleanly with packages, and Kali is the uh, reverse of Backtrack. Uh, based on Debian with Debian packages, not all of them clean, but uh, at least uh, uh, clearly separated. So the company behind uh, Kali Linux is Offensive Security. Uh, she is do, uh, the company is doing uh, penetration tests and security trainings. Uh, so Kali Linux is really uh, their toolbox for uh, the security audit and the penetration testing, but at the same time, it's also a, a marketing product because well, they give it freely uh, to users on the internet, so they are known for this, and it brings them customers for their trainings. Linux is rather popular. Uh, we have uh, more than 100,000 downloads for each uh, release. For the ISO image, we have many mi uh, mirrors on the everywhere on the world. Uh, the forums and the ISC channel are very active, so there's a large user base. Uh, and it's also uh, well, since it's well known in the security field, there are many upstream authors of security software who are using it as a reference platform. So this is rather useful for us because. Uh, since they develop on Kali, uh, it tends to work on Kali. <laughs> and we have uh, less problem to integrate it. It doesn't mean that they do clean stuff, but at least it works and we can help them to, to run something cleaner in terms of packaging. So what I like about this is that it means we have a very large user base of Debian testing user, because uh, Kali is really Debian testing. So if on the Debian side we, we tend to tell uh, Debian testing is for advanced user or user or, uh, at ease, on the Kali side we do not give any such message. So uh, we have some support issue, but uh, it means it's also realistic to, to give uh, Debian testing to you end user. So my role in Kali Linux, so I'm a Debian developer for a very long time and I'm working as a consultant since uh, two, uh, 2004 in my own company called Friction. And I've been working with Offensive Security since the start of Kali Linux. They found me through the Debian consultant list and uh, we discussed and uh, I worked for a full year before Kali Linux had been announced publicly. And since then, I've done lots of stuff for, well, at the start, mainly uh, 
creating the infrastructure for the packaging and packaging lots of software. At the same time, we, there are so many software, th about 300 of them, that uh, I trained a few other person from the company to, so that they could help us in the process. And nowadays, most of the work is on the last part, uh, monitoring uh, well, the health of the distribution, because uh, as we discuss later, we have checks to ensure that it works. And since uh, every day we have new packages from testing, uh, uh, we have regular regressions and stuff to fix. So what do we use uh, for infrastructure? Hardware-wise, it's a lot of, well, a lot of, many uh, rented servers on virtual machines on the internet over several places. We have one man machine where we host our repository. It's an internal machine, not really published. And we have a sort of public mirror of it, which is archive.cali.org, which is a reference machine which is used by all mirrors. We have uh, mirror redirectors uh, based on mirror brain. So when you install Kali, uh, your source.list file points to uh, http.kali.org, and from there you are redirected to a mirror close to you. We have uh, mirrors that we manage ourselves, and we have also mirrors that are contributed by uh, universities and companies and stuff like that. We have four build servers, uh, one uh, one for each ARM uh, one for each ARM architectures and also one which does both uh, AMD64 and E386. <coughs> we have one server mo mostly dedicated to quality assurance and, and one uh, where we run uh, configuration management stuff. And I start by the management server because the most of our services are, have been integrated uh, with that. So we use SaltStack as a management configuration management tool so that we can easily uh, uh, we deploy service on new servers in case of need. Uh, and uh, we use some uh, SaltStack event features, which basically allows you to inform uh, one host of something that happened on another host uh, to coordinate operation. For example, every day we build the uh, ISO image, daily ISO image on our build machines. And when it's finished, it uh, informs the central repository, which downloads the ISO image to make it available to use. We created some salt formula, so it's uh, basically a sort of recipes uh, ready to use for uh, full services. And we created uh, three of them, we, but uh, actually we use only mainly the S build one, but it's. Uh, Layered solution, so the bootstrap is a way to just run the bootstrap uh, on a given uh, distribution. You just have to give the distribution name, and uh, it will. Uh, the, the the formula has all the information of uh, where what what is the main mirror that it should use, where, uh, what components are available in the distribution, and so on. S should build on top of the bootstrap to add S should integration and S build builds on top of S should to uh, it builds a, a should S should should if you want but uh, with the name expected by S build and with the appropriate seam links uh, ready so so we use that to set up our build uh, demons obviously well, and we contributed fix to other formula that we use. So the package repository is uh, managed by uh, Repropro. Uh, it accepts uploads by SSH. Uh, we have upload, source uploads from develops, uh, obviously, but also binary uploads from buildings. This is rather usual. Uh, it's also this machine which uh, includes build jobs on build demons 
through SSH. This is a rather um, easy solution, um, but uh, I'll come on back on this later when I speak of build demos because we're using uh, rebuild, which is uh, basically there's no central service uh, uh, listing which build needs to happen, so we directly send build operation to each build demon. And we have a single builder per architecture. The server also centralizes ISO image that we build and it imports package from Debian, runs Britnet uh, to create uh, a consistent distribution out of what we get from Debian and from Kali, and fetches the public ar archive. So the public archive uh, is just Nginx to serve files over HTTP and rsync, rsync to uh, make the file available to other downstream mirrors. The, we use the FTP sync or, or Arch sync script that Debian is using with its own, smear, its own mirror. Uh, so it's based on SSH triggers and uh, notifies downstream mirror, mirrors when they have to update um, themselves. We have uh, a rsync access is uh, restricted uh, to only official mirrors, and we ma manage that through salt uh, from a list of official mirrors that is uh, well, stored in salt data. And the same data is reused by the mirror redirector service. So mirror redirector is run with Myra Brain, which is an, an Apache module. Uh, it uses a PostgreSQL database to know which files are avail available on each Myra, uh, and uh, it uh, watches the status of each Myra and uh, redirects you to a working mirror close to you. So definition of working uh, on Myra Brain by default is only uh, uh, HTTP is available. Uh, we got a bit frozen and we uh, hooked another script to disable mirror which are no longer in sync with the main archive. Uh, mirror brain is not yet in Debian, but the upstream provides Debian files, and I would like to see this software in Debian. Uh, I thought of promising it to its upstream browser, but I never could. Uh, kept my promise yet, so if you want to help me keep my promise, well, I'll gladly get, get some help. Uh, me or Ben has been working relatively well for us. It has some rough sides. Rough side. uh, I get many notifications which are not really interesting it's, uh, when uh, uh, downstream me or uh, uh, are not available, but only for a short period of time, for example, or and it has a rather annoying bug that I worked around, uh, uh, which is related to uh, how it handles files. When you delete, fi delete files from the main archives, it may still be on downstream mirrors, but uh, it will immediately start returning uh, HTTP uh, 404 errors instead of uh, keeping redirecting to whatever mirror still has uh, the file. Uh, I worked around this by ensuring that uh, we keep deleted files for a few days before uh, actually removing them. So build servers, uh, we use rebuild D, which is a Debian package but, uh, created by uh, a French guy, Julien Anjou, uh, and uh, it's rather simple. It has no complicated feature, but it does its job. Uh, it uses a SQLite database to keep track of what it has to build, and it builds them. But uh, there's no, no way to handle builders of multiple machines. It's just basically a list of packages to build on a given builder. So, we feed the, the, pack, uh, the source package to build from the, directly from the machine running repo to the builder. 
This is not a problem for us because uh, we use binary package uh, from Debian unmodified modified, and we have only uh, 400 uh, packages which are really specific to Kali and that we have to build. So the workload of building is not so high and a single machine is fine for this. Uh, the build machines also build ISO images with live build. Uh, so again, we have official releases and daily builds uh, made available. I know that live build is officially orphaned in Debian, but we use it in Kali and we'll keep using it. And uh, we will keep making, uh, maintaining it in Debian uh, until at least uh, uh, we will fix anything that is broken. We might not develop new features and stuff like that. But uh, but uh, we will make sure it doesn't it does not get removed at least not until it, uh, its replacement is as feature complete as live build because so far live wrapper is really uh, light on features. <laughs> For quality assurance, uh, we have a private Jenkins server with many jobs. Uh, we run tests on. Only on uh, IMD64 and E386 architectures, so, so we don't have tests for the other architectures. It was initially set up by uh, Olga Levson with a similar setup to what we have to nowadays on Jenkins, Debian.net. And we have uh, a public bug tracker, obviously, which is a Montis setup. Well, I think Montis is, is gone from Debian, but well. <laughs> so I speak a bit about the structure of the distribution, how we, what repository we have, what meta package we have created, and, and, and what Kali specific package we have. Uh, Kali specific being both forked package from Debian and package that really exist only in Kali. So, how do we create our release? <laughs> we have our Kali packages in a repository called Kali-dev-only. So, uh, that's where we upload our, our packages. And it contains only results. Debian testing is a plain mirror of Debian testing. And from there on, we build Kali-dev. We combine Debian testing with Kali-dev-only. Uh, and Kali Dev only uh, takes precedence. So if one package in, is in both uh, repository, uh, you get uh, one from Kali Dev only. Obviously, this breaks uh, quite often when, uh, for example, there is a transition uh, finished uh, in Debian testing. Uh, we have to do the same transition in Kali Dev only. So to ensure that we have something uh, consistent to use for a user, we run Britney on top of Kali Dev and this is then named Kali Rolling. Uh, our Britnet configuration is rather simple because we have no delay to wait, no RC bugs to check. Uh, so basically it boils down to instability checks and making sure that the package are available in all the architecture. We have created the meta packages. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a simple way to install a set of related packages through uh, an empty packages whose sole purpose is to have dependencies. So for example, we have Kali Linux full, which defines our default system that you get installed on our live image. But we have a whole set of topic-based uh, meta packages as well. Software defined radio, one oriented to tools using your GPU, wireless tools, web tools, forensic tools, voice over IP tools, password cracking tools, <laughs> RFID. And NetHunter is a specific one. NetHunter is a, uh, basically a, a phone device on which you can install Kali to do funny things like uh, plug it in, in a computer, like uh, say you have a friend, or a, a target rather, uh, 
you, you ask him if you can charge your, uh, your phone on the USB price, uh, yes. So you stick it in and it becomes uh, a network devices that takes, uh, uh, con which becomes the default uh, outgoing route in key. So basically you, you monitor everything through your phone, but you uh, drive the traffic back to the original interface. So you can uh, snoop everything. It also becomes a uh, keyboard, so you can uh, send uh, case strokes and take control uh, of the computer. So it's a really nice project uh, that uh, uh, they created. And uh, well, this one it contains all the dependencies that you have to to run to set up this on a phone. We have also some desktop oriented uh, meta package, so that if you wants to install or rather when you create it's mainly used in the creation process of ISO image because uh, you can create custom ISO image uh, for a specific desktop and then you you use those and you get something rather well integrated with Kali and we have two special packages which are Kali Linux all which is a dependency which is a meta package of meta packages so when you install this one you have everything uh, it's r too huge for most people, so it, we use it for testing because it's a way to ensure that we... It's a simple way for us to install all our packages. Uh, and the Kali Linux top 10, so the most popular, the 10 most popular packages among Kali. Uh, So Kali specific package, we have a few package of our own. Kali Defo is basically a default configuration file for the web browser, but also for uh, desktop with gconf, gconf, dconf, g settings, and the, uh, everything that is related to that. We have Kali menu, which is using the free desktop menu specification to create a, a Kali specific menu where uh, all the usual entries are even one level below and where we put all our, all our Kali tools in the main level, in the main menu. Kali root login is a set of hacks because uh, Kali default user is root and uh, you can't log in as root in KDM, GDM by default so this basically diverts some PAM, PAM configuration file to allow this. Kali Meta is well where we build our Meta packages, and Kali Archive Clearing is uh, the key to sign our repository. Uh, we also fork quite a, a few packages. So the minimal, the minimum one is base files because you want to uh, to be recognized as being a derivative, so you, you must modify etc OS release and so on, base and etc dpkg default and stuff like that uh, for various reasons. Desktop base is where you change uh, the, the background picture of the desktop, and root scale dash gtk is for the branding within the installer. Uh, we have a few desktop features. We have a modified version of DOM shell extension uh, with an application menu supporting nested me menu. Uh, it used to support this, but our recent GNOME version uh, dropped this, so we uh, we developed uh, something to, uh, to keep that feature for us. And in GNOME Terminal, we add a patch to support transparency, which also got removed uh, by GNOME uh, recently. We fork Linux, uh, mainly to add a single patch, which allows Wi-Fi injections on many uh, brands of uh, Wi-Fi car wi cards. Um, I would like to get this one to Debian, but uh, I'm not sure it's actually possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I, we discussed it once already. I think uh, Upstream didn't like it, so. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we have a fork of init system helpers. Basically, it's a, a fork of update-rcd to disable most services by default. Uh, it's, a, it's a hack, uh, and I'm rather happy that we have found a cleaner solution for the future. <laughs> Uh, we recently contributed, uh, well, with the help of uh, Andreas Henriksson, I believe, uh, support of preset files in systemd in Debian because the D DH systemd was uh, always using the uh, systemctl enable instead of systemctl preset. And so we, we fixed this, and so you can now use systemd preset files to disable services by default. At least it works for uh, packages that have uh, systemd units, which is not all of them, which is the reason why we still have to keep the update rcd fork for now. Uh, obviously, we have customized Debian installer, uh, mainly to put a preceed file uh, in the init rd which is generated. And related to this, we have a few two UDEPs that we modified, uh, net retriever to make it use uh, the correct package for our containing our key for the repository and uh, another one to change the default host name. When you want to install a well, they bootstrap uh, Kali, uh, obviously uh, uh, Debian Debian Sub doesn't know of Kali yet, so we have a, a, a fork to support this. And a few open bug robots, bug robots that are in the bootstrap as well. And Debian CD is as well as some distro specific data that uh, we have to add. We have a modified live, live build with EFI uh, boot support, which we contributed back into a bug report, but which never was applied and which is not entirely not satisfying. So uh, uh, that's why I never committed it di directly. I wanted someone to review it, but since then uh, Daniel stepped down, so it's somewhat languishing. Oh, that's it. Now, uh, how do we do? Yeah, you have time, yes. Uh, our packaging. Uh, we do everything in Git repository, so you can find all our packages in git.cali.org. We use uh, what I consider the standard and best tool to use nowadays, so git build package. We use uh, pristine tar to store the oil tarball. 3.0 killed for a source package format. Short rule files with DH, so this is rather standard. <coughs> when we have a package fork from Debian, we maintain a Debian branch with uh, git build package import DSC on a separate branch, on the Debian branch, and uh, then you check out the Kali branch and you merge directly uh, from Debian. It works rather well, in particular if you have configured dpkg merge changer to avoid most of the conflicts on changer files. Um, another packaging related workflow is uh, the Britney, because Britney needs uh, some manual care. Uh, mo most of the migrations are automatic on ours because while well, we are really, really close to testing, and testing is already really consistent, so we don't have many problems. But you still have an uh, issue from time to time when well, Debian uh, used uh, some first hint to bring a package in. We have to use similar hints. Uh, happens also for packages we, uh, we, which need some, which, uh, I'm not sure, uh, arch all packages which are not installable on uh, E386 or stuff like that which are forced in also on the Debian side. So, what do we do on the quality assurance side? So, as I said, we have a Jenkins instance, and it runs mainly four kinds of jobs. 
the simple test we do is installing our meta packages in minimal shoots. Um, well, that's the test that breaks most often, usually because uh, either a package needs to, to be rebuilt in Kalidev only, or because uh, a package got removed on the Debian side. So I'll talk about this later. We also have a new grading test. Even so, we, we are rolling release. We do snapshot every four to six months. And so we do tests and we do ensure that uh, when you uh, started with the last snapshot, you can upgrade up to the current uh, status. We ensure that uh, our ISO build process works because, well, many of our users uh, uh, build customized live build image, and so we want to be sure that it always works. And we also test uh, installation from the ISO image. Also, this is rather a uh, superficial test. I think Olger had great plans, but did not manage to finish them uh, at this level. <laughs> Uh, we kept running it, but I think it's not checking much. We would like to go further in terms of quality assurance, because, uh, well, uh, security software are rather uh, ver are very specific, sometimes hard to understand and hard to, uh, and for us, packager uh, without specific knowledge of the domain, uh, it can be hard to ensure that they work. So we would like to be able to synthesize this knowledge into a test and then rely on those tests. And obviously then hook those results into Britney because uh, we have nothing that can block uploads a uh, package that we upload in Kali Dev only into Kali Rolling. Uh, so we would like to have this sanity check in the middle. So we would upload to Kali Dev only, it would run auto package test and it would only accept them in Kali rolling if the test succeeded. But we are not here that. So now the more interesting part for Debian, the problems that we have related to Debian or not. So if you want to look it up you can check the bugs that we filed. Uh, not all of them are related to the infrastructure, many of them are related to specific packages, but a few of them are related to the infrastructure, no, notably related to RepoPro. Uh, as I said in the talk before, the RepoPro has no integration with Britney, so Britney outputs a file which is called a ID result, uh, which is really the list of packages of binary packages that you want uh, in the resulting distribution. But uh, Repopo can't use this. Uh, Repopo has a set of commons, so uh, we have written uh, a script which translates this in a large set of Repopo calls, and uh, it works fine, but it's not really nice. I would rather have something integrated. Repropo also has no feature to keep deleted, to keep files of deleted package for a few days. So uh, when a package is deleted, it goes away from the uh, mirror immediately. And this is causing problems for us. So we again asked something with uh, snapshot. So Repropo has a snapshot feature where you can, uh, uh, well, snapshot uh, distribution at a given time and then it will keep around the file as long as the snapshot uh, is there, except that the snapshot feature is not really complete. So you can't really remove a snapshot yourself, you have to individually remove refer references to keep the file around, so it's again not really clean. And one of the mo most annoying problems that uh, I have with uh, Repopro is the fact that while well, sometimes in Kali we upload new upstream version of Debian packages before Debian. So we push 
a new .org.gz file. And when Debian updates it, for some reason, because uh, either uh, the Debian package has been re uh, repackaged or because it has been downloaded from another place, sometimes you can download from GitHub uh, directly at StarGZ, and sometimes you can download it from PyPy or another source. So, uh, the result of basically make this. And so the, it's not exactly the same file. So you have conflicting files, and repropo does not allow this. And it's saying to not allow this, but uh, it has no feature to solve this problem. And uh, we have to solve it. So we, uh, the only solution is to manually remove the, our Kali version uh, in all suites where it is, and copy back the Debian version. And it gets really hard because when you want to keep files for a few days, you, you, you add snapshots, but snapshots, you have no way to modify them. So it's really tricky. Yeah. So it would be nice to have something here. So it's somewhat related. The, another problem is out of date Debian packages. It would be nice if we did not had to uh, push new apps inversion on the Kali side. It, because the, the new app version would be already in Debian unstable or Debian testing, but it's not always the case. Mainly when it happens, it's due to maintainers missing in action. So part of our solution so far has been to create a PKG-security team to take over a package which are not really well maintained in Debian. So we're starting to do more work within Debian in this team. So now the, the problem which are more specific to, to Debian testing. The main one is package being removed. We, we, we have our meta packages. They list packages from Kali, but they also list a lot of packages from Debian. And uh, some of them get removed. So one of the common reasons is uh, due to release critical bugs, which are not handled on the Debian side because, again, the maintainers is uh, missing in action or maybe because the maintainers does not care. It, as long as it gets fixed before the release, he's happy with this. It, it's not, it might not be a problem for him if it's not in testing. Uh, we have no solution yet for this, but we would like to uh, add a supplementary Jenkins check, which would basically uh, monitor the, the, the running, of, well, the output, how can I help uh, restrict it to the, the testing removals warnings that it emits. We have multiple ways to get this information, but uh, uh, how can I help recently got a uh, uh, machine parsable output, so we can rely on it if we want. Uh, well, our idea was mainly to install uh, Kali Linux all, so that we have our packages, then run all kind of app, and then filter the output uh, that we get. A second reason explaining the package get drops might be uh, the QA team requesting uh, their removal, because, well, he, the package might have uh, a few bugs and low popularity contests. So uh, if the maintainer seems to be missing in action, uh, why keep the package? So it's true that a few of them got removed that way. So Debian is not aware of uh, package use in derivatives. And we should aim to fix this. Maybe through tracker.debian.org advertising package which are relevant in the context of uh, derivatives. I don't know. And the last point is when the release team kicks package out of testing to finish a transition. Uh, sometimes a package needs changes in unstable, and when it doesn't happen often in quickly enough to be ready with the other packages, the package gets dropped from testing, and it gets back in when it's fixed, but it still uh, means a few days where there is no packages in, in testing. Uh, the second problem is 
package which are broken uh, or it often happens with partial transition uh, what this means is that when you have a package A depending on package B with a minimal version and uh, well for some reason uh, the minimal version is not com correct anymore it should have been increased but it has been missed uh, either through the tooling or through because the maintainer did not look uh, the, the change log correctly and stuff like that and both packages have not been uploaded exactly the same day the first one will migrate to testing before the other and until the second one migrates the uh, package might be broken at runtime. So such partial transitions are creating untested combinations that ends up not working. Uh, it happens quite frequently in the context of GNOME transition because GNOMEs do somewhat stage transitions. Uh, only five? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, well, so that's a problem for us. We also have uh, problems with upstream not caring about backwards compatibility. Uh, so when we upload the package to Debian, the situation is not really perfect. But uh, over the months, until the freeze, uh, such problems tend to be fixed. But uh, in testing, you obviously have a few weeks or months where the situation is problematic. Um, one last reason might be that bugs might be filed too late or, or at a non-appropriate severity so that the package still migrates. And we often have also problems with regressions with new kernel re release. Uh, even so, Ben keeps uploads only new kernel with when the dot one stable release is out. Uh, it's, we still have a few regressions. So, our wishes. So, uh, I already spoke of uh, Britney auto package test integration, uh, missing repo pop features. But what I, what we, we would like is that Debian, in general, cares more about testing. So, at the individual developer's level, I mean, taking care of your own package in testing, ensuring that it gets fixed. I mean, if you know that it doesn't work, uh, take care to use uh, urgency high to get it fixed in two days or instead of five. Uh, I would also like the release team to acknowledge that uh, it's more than a tool to build stable. It's also used by derivatives and by others. So there are really end users using it. So try to be more open to accept quick and temporary fixes. Even if it's used only for four days or five days, it's still useful. But this can only happen, obviously, if we have the developers who cares about this and are ready to prepare such uploads. So it would be nice to, re to revive uh, and have a real cut team which cares about the status of testing. I would like report bug to be, be, behave better on derivatives uh, because it reports back directly to Debian without warning the user. Up. Uh, still, for the release team, I would like some way to some way to gather data about transitions. Uh, I would like to know if Kali is affected. We have trackers on the Debian side, but uh, uh, I would like to be able to check uh, on the Kali side if we are affected also, without having to run my own tracker and copying all the tracker stuff, and be informed that it has been completed so that I can check in a timely manner if we have uh, something to rebuild. We would like some application bundling supports because quite a few of our, of our uh, packages are, for example, Ruby on, web, Ruby on Rails web application, which use many, many gems in different versions, not necessarily the ones which are packaged in Debian. And uh, so we end up currently bundling bundle into our devs. But uh, I believe it would be nicer if we could uh, rely on something like uh, uh, 
uh, a mix of uh, flat pack, sandstorm, and uh, <laughs> and uh, snappy uh, that would be generic enough to cover web application and uh, services. Uh, both to for the case where we can't deal it deal it properly with Debian package, also for the case where we know the application to be not clean and doing nasty stuff on the system. So we want continu continuization for those. I would like a proper MyRoban package, I said, and more volunteers for the new team we created and we announced recently on Devil. That's it. Perfect timing, I guess. <laughs> If you have a few minutes left for questions, maybe otherwise, yes. Uh, yeah, just so you know, I've only just this minute got the live wrapper UEFI support working. Uh, okay. So we have. Um, I, I don't hear you very well. I know you are speak of live wrapper, but speak speak louder a bit. All right. So I've just now got the live wrapper. Um, branch building with the um, UFI support. So okay. it has ISO Linux and Grub Turn support. It, it is on. Is it not working very well? It is on. The PA doesn't work for that much, but it's, it works. That's, that's all I have. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, it's not the UFI support that we lack in Live Wrapper. It's rather all the hooks and the possibility to configure uh, at runtime and at build time. Uh, we have a question from IRC from Pere. Uh, he he says, comment to the speaker: It is possible to change the desktop background and the installer pictures without forking desktop base and root uh, root scale GTK. We do so in Debian Edu. Check the Debian Edu artwork package. Okay, I will do that. I think we, we can have uh, one more question as we're already on the, like, uh, about to finish. Please, is there any other? Um, I have a question as a developer. I'm actually uh, following my tracker uh, very well, which you're also quite heavily involved in. Why do I only sh see one uh, derivative showing up there? You, you, do you mean why do we see only Ubuntu uh, on Debian tracker? Okay, uh, but basically because nobody else did the, the work to provide data on the Debian side, but. Uh, uh, Actually, I would like uh, each derivative to have its own tracker and uh, so that I can build features in uh, trackers that would export data that we could merge back in our own tracker. <laughs> and w w at least Kali has its own tracker instance uh, and we use it to uh, check, compare the, our package with Debian. So if you go to pkg.kali.org there is a link, uh, the Rivetti page, and we, you will see what we have on Link Ali, what it forked from Debian, and uh, and so on. And, and what, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. We have to stick to the, to the times as much as possible. Thank you. Okay.